This is 5M Zero to Hero, and I'm Charles Axe. Welcome back to another episode, everyone, and today we are going to be talking about setting up VS Code to be the most productive you can be while working on 5M development. Uh, now, an important disclaimer before we dive into this setup, uh, development environments are um, very personal. Everyone has different things that they use to make them more productive. So don't take anything I say here today as gospel, um, because certainly you will have different tweaks and things you wanna change about your development environment to make you the most productive you can can be, heck, you might not even use VS Code. There are many different IDEs out there um, that you might prefer. You know, there's Atom, uh, there's Sublime Text, there's, you can go real old school and use Notepad++. So there's a lot of different ways to do uh, all of this and there's no right or wrong way. We're gonna keep things pretty simple in today's episode. I'm gonna go over a couple basics uh, just to get a baseline for you to start building up your environment and making it suit your workflows. So without any further ado, let's dive in and talk about the first couple things we're gonna change. All right, so the first First one for me is that VS Code, everything is a little small for my preferences. I'm also working on a 1440p ultra wide most of the time. I, of course, film in a different resolution, but my day to day work is usually an ultra wide aspect ratio. And VS Code by default, everything's a little small. So you can use Control and Plus and Minus on your keyboard to change the size of the entire interface from obviously hilariously large to impractically small. So the first thing I usually do is just kind of find something that's comfortable for me. And typically when I'm recording videos, I'll run it a little bit larger than I do when I'm just coding on my own because I wanna make sure you guys can see everything. But one way or another, use that control and plus and minus to find a size that works for you. All right, with that out of the way, uh, let's talk a little bit about VS Code's integrated terminal. So if you've been watching my videos at all, you're well aware that I use, I do all of my 5M commands right inside of VS Code using VS Code's integrated terminal. And the way that you get that open is by going to terminal up in the top of your screen and clicking new terminal, or you can use control shift tilde to get into uh, a new terminal. Now, one thing that you'll notice is that this defaults to PowerShell and PowerShell is incredibly powerful, but I generally don't like to use it in my tutorials. And honestly, in my day to day, I don't really use PowerShell um, unless I'm doing very, something very specific that requires it. I like to work in command prompt. And so if we go to the down arrow over here in our terminal, we can open a a command prompt terminal. However, doing this every time you open VS Code, every time you open a new terminal, you'll see if I add a new one over here, it goes back to PowerShell, uh, is not the most convenient. So if you just click the down arrow and click select default profile, you can choose command prompt here. And that way, every time you open a new terminal, it will always be command prompt. And I get a ton of use out of this integrated terminal, right? So obviously I can start my server from here. And that's gonna give me access to my 5M server console right from in VS Code where I can you know, refresh or restart resources and anything else I might need to do in my 5M console. But when I'm working on NUI projects and I'm using like Webpack or something for Vue.js or React, I obviously can have that running in here as well and monitoring my whole build system. I also usually keep a separate terminal open for Git commands so I can commit and push and check out branches uh, when I'm working on a large project like that. So definitely take advantage of the terminal that's built into VS Code. It saves you some alt tabbing around and keeps everything in one place. And now the next thing that we wanna do is we want to set up our Lua language support. And so what I have here, I'm just in my server data uh, folder that I use for these tutorials. So I just have a couple of resources in here, some Lua files so we can look at how this works. And what we wanna set up is Lua language server, which is going to be a VS Code extension. So if you go to view in the top and then go to extensions, uh, you can also access this using control shift X. This is where you can install extensions and you can see I don't have any extensions installed right now. It's giving me some recommended and popular ones, but I'm just gonna search for Lua. And for me, the one that I'm looking for is right up at the very top. It's just called Lua. Uh, and you can see this one has uh, the most downloads out of everything listed here at 773,000. And this is going to give us syntax highlighting. This is going to give us uh, syntax checking and a whole host of features. So all I need to do is click install up here and this will install. And the first time you install this or when you open a new project, it'll take a second for it to kind of initialize. And you can see this sometimes in the bottom left, you'll see this loading workspace appears and you gotta wait for that to finish before all of its features kind of become available in this workspace. And now that it has, you can see we have a whole host of problems. So you can see we have squiggly lines all over the place here, indicating that things are wrong. And if we go to the problems tab down here, same place where we access our terminal, we can see all of the Lua problems in our project. 
Now, a lot of these aren't actually valid um, because there are some things that 5M does differently. 5M has a, a special build of Lua that adds some features that base Lua doesn't have, um, as well as just some things that are done differently in 5M. So almost all of these problems aren't actually valid. And so how do we get it to kind of shut up about the things that aren't really relevant to us? Well, if we hover over one of these uh, issues, you can see what it's complaining about, and then you can also see the rule that it's using. So in this case, the rule is error-nonstandard-symbol. And in this case, what it's complaining about is these backticks, right? So in 5M, we can use backticks in Lua um, to turn a string into a hash, and the Lua language system isn't aware of this because this is something specific to 5M. So all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to disable this specific rule. And the way we do that is by going to our settings. So if I go to file, preferences, and settings, and then what we wanna do is expand extensions and scroll down until we find Lua. And as we scroll through these Lua settings, you'll eventually come across one called diagnostics disable. And this allows us to disable those certain diagnostics that don't apply to us. And in this case, what we had was error non-standard symbol. So I'm going to find that and click okay to add it. And you'll see all of those errors disappeared down in our problems. If we go back to our script, it's no longer complaining about that. So let's address the next issue that we have, which is saying undefined global register command. And that's gonna be because once again, the Lua language isn't aware of all of these natives that we have in 5M, like register command or door system set open ratio. So once again, we can see the rule uh, that it's complaining about here, undefined global. And if we go back to our settings, so file, preferences, and settings, if you've closed it, extensions, Lua, scroll until you find diagnostics disable, and we'll add undefined global. And now, if we check, this looks pretty good. Now, we're also seeing some other issues that are showing up here. And another one that I run into quite a bit is lowercase globals, right? So when I write functions, I'm usually writing them in camel case, which is kind of non-standard for Lua, right? So if I write a function foobar, I'm going to write it like this. And Lua typically prefers you to have global functions start with a capital letter. And since I don't do that, this is another one of those rules that I disable, and that's lowercase global. So I'll go back to my settings and add lowercase global. There we go, perfect. So now it's no longer complaining about that, and you can see in this entire project, we're only down to 12 errors here. And these remaining errors, some of them are valid, some of them are things that we might need to fix. Others, once again, just have to do with Lua and 5M's version of Lua, the syntax being a little bit different, which we're actually gonna have a master series video coming out soon that talks about some of these differences between Lua and 5M's version of Lua. So if you're enjoying this video and you're enjoying the content on the channel, be sure to hit subscribe and hit that bell icon so you can be notified when that video and other 5M videos come out. And finally, with our Lua language server setup, we only have one more thing to set up and that's going to be installing an extension that gives us access to all of the 5M natives. So if you look and I hover over something like door system set open ratio, it doesn't know anything about this, which isn't very useful to us. So if we go back to our extensions and we search for 5M, you're going to find quite a few of them here. And once again, it comes down to personal preference and what you find works best for you. However, my recommendation is to use the 5M natives plugin. It has the blue icon from 5M VS code. And the reason that I like this extension is because it automatically updates from the 5M documentation. So some of these that provide the 5M natives, uh, you're reliant on the maintainer of that extension to update it when new natives are added or when natives are updated. This specific extension actually pulls in the latest natives uh, every time you load the extension from the 5M native website. So you're not reliant on the maintainer to update it when things change. It's kind of always up to date, which is why I really like it. So I'm just going to hit install here. And with this 5M natives extension installed, if we go back to one of our scripts that has some 5M natives in it and hover over this native, it actually gives us everything from the 5M documentation right here. So we can see the description of the native, we can see all of its parameters. And of course, this is really, really useful. So let's say we're gonna do something like set entity chords. You can actually see suggestions of all of the natives that match this and you can use tab to autocomplete. And then when we go in here, once again, we get a description of the native and all of the parameters it takes and what the type is, right? So numbers, booleans, things like that. 
like that. And as we go through these, you can actually see it highlights which one we're on. So we kind of know where we're at and what we're doing. So obviously having these natives available to us is really, really useful. It'll speed up your development. A lot of times I'll kind of remember what a native's called, but I've forgotten exactly what it is. And having this available makes it really, really easy. And then of course, I always forget what parameters a native takes or what order they're in, or if it wants integers or floats. And so all of this being available along with the descriptions right in my code editor makes me way more productive. And so to summarize the tips we talked about today is resizing VS code so it's readable and usable for you, setting up your terminal to be as productive as possible, installing the Lua language server and setting it up so it works for your 5M environment, and installing the 5M natives extension so you have all the documentation about natives available right in your code editor. And like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this is only a starting point. If there's things you like or dislike about VS Code, there's probably an extension that fixes it for you or makes it better. There are themes. If you don't like the syntax highlighting, you can find different themes. So there's a million and one ways to customize VS Code and make it the most productive it can be for you. And I hope you found a little bit of gold somewhere in this video, something that is going to level up your development skills. I love to hear about what you guys are doing, the nuggets that you're taking out of my videos and putting into practice to make your 5M development skills better. Be sure to leave a comment down below with what you learned, what you're going to put into practice. Don't forget to like the video, of course, subscribe, hit that bell icon. Link to my Discord is down in the description. Be sure to join that. There's a ton of helpful people there. I hang out and answer questions as well. So thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.